T-A-G-49. Hey everybody! All right, so we're at story time part four. Um, this is probably one of my hardest stories to tell, and only because it's it's one that you know makes me a really big person of who I am. Um, when I was five years old. Uh, Me and my mom were supposed to be going out of town with uh, my grandparents, um, and a lot of uh, people knew it. Um, and uh, the weather was really bad, so instead of driving through the night, like, because that was one of the things my my grandpa uh, Paul always did was he he enjoyed driving through the night because there was less traffic. Um, it made it easier to go up north, which was. Uh, where he was originally from was Pennsylvania, and um, we were actually supposed to be going up there for the holidays. And um, my one aunt was out of town, and uh, so me and my mom ended up, you know, staying at the house again. And um, my stepfather. Um, and my mom slept in separate rooms, and uh, because they had different schedules, like I think he got up earlier and she did. Uh, he went to sleep uh, earlier or something. I don't know, just different schedules. Uh, but this night in particular, he um, he got up and he went to the gas station and uh, he went and got him a cheer wine and uh, some other things and whatnot. And uh, he came back and me and my mom were already asleep. Uh, because we were getting up early in the morning to go out of town. Uh, now, at some point, something happened, and he got shot in the back of the head in the master bedroom. My mom was in the back, uh, the one back bedroom, and my room was actually the one straight across from it. But in that night in particular, I was actually sleeping with um, I mean, when you're five, it happens, right? Now, as far as that goes, uh, my mom heard a gunshot, and she ended up calling 911, and, uh, I think she, like, went in the hallway or something, I don't know, but I remember looking out the window, and I remember seeing somebody, and I remember seeing who they were, and I kind of knew them, and I remember shutting the blind back. I don't know if they saw me, but I saw them. Now, because it's part of my trauma, I don't fully remember. Because... I just remember laying in bed and pretending like I was asleep. And uh, then when, you know, the cops showed up and whatnot, my grandparents showed up and... Uh, and pretty much they carried me out to their car and I went to their house. Um, the next morning, uh, my dad came and got me from my grandparents' house and took me to his. Um, and then it was a while before, because um, I think this was, I think this happened in, uh, I think it was around Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't remember. I can't. I'd have to look it up. But that's beside the one. That's near the year over there. I just know it was bad weather. You know, ice on the roof. So, you know, anywhere between November to February is when it could happen. Um, and that, like I said, that doesn't really matter. I think it might have been in February. I don't know. But, um,. Uh, my grandparents had picked me up a couple times to like go to a birthday party or whatnot, and uh, 
I remember talking to my mom's lawyer and whatnot, and you know, I do remember telling everybody that I saw somebody outside that window. Um, now, my dad had took me to see the detective, the one that fingerprinted me in the last video, but um, they both kept telling me that I saw nobody, that it was just all in my head and I was making it up, that I needed to quit lying and, and telling stories. Now, I know I saw somebody. Um, I'll let y'all do the math, I'll let y'all piece things together. I have a really good idea of it possibly doing to being two people that I know. Um, come to find out over the years, I, you know, I've, you know, I've got the transcripts, I've done my research, I've looked at things. Um, my stepfather was bisexual. Him and my mom had a semi-open relationship, meaning, uh, she was the only woman in his life, and she was fine with him having a boyfriend. Now, I think nothing different of him, um, because at the end of the day, I know how my mom was, and I knew how caring she was, and it was all in agreement, so it wasn't like, um, so, my stepfather was shot and killed, and then, uh, the next day, uh, he was, he was, he actually had, I guess you'd say two boyfriends per se, but one he had stopped talking to to talk to the other one, I guess, one had mental issues, I don't know, you know, I, I was five, but, um, the one, and they all three worked together, go figure, the one that he was talking to fired the one that he stopped talking to. Coincidence, but um, and the one that he had stopped talking to borrowed the gun that shot him the week before. When he found out that he had borrowed it, because my mom said that he, you know, whatnot, he went and got it back. But a lot of that wasn't, you know, they didn't care about that in the, in the trial. Now, my mom's fingerprints weren't on the gun. She had no gunpowder residue on it. Um, they tried to say that she cried and it washed the gunpowder off. And the jury believed that, you know, because a lot of the people, they, they're very educated. They're very uneducated when it comes to firearms. Um, the next part being said, uh, my stepdad had gunpowder residue on him, and he had his fingerprints on it. He was actually shot right here, and it kind of came out like, so there's a lot of math on that one that, how does my mom get, sent, you know, how does she get found guilty? Now, I have a theory because um, I feel like she, she did a lot of helping while she was in prison. So I feel like God put her in there for a reason because it made me who I am because I learned a lot about, you know, certain people while I was in there. And I learned a lot about the system. Uh, so again, it made me who I am. It made me view people a certain way. So the next part being said, um, when it, you know when it came to trial and whatnot, I went up and I said what I said, and my brain was really messed up because I didn't know what to say because I felt brainwashed by my father, um, and whatnot, and he ended up benefiting a lot for me, moving in. He ended up getting a social security check for my stepfather, which, yeah, uh, he went to Cancun with his second wife, took the whole first check that was given to do things for me, yeah, I know, yeah, I agree, but, um, that's not what this video is about anyway, but, um, Some of the things that were said on trial was, uh, was, uh, they interviewed a, um, gun specialist, and they asked him questions and whatnot, and one of his answers was, uh, is it 
you know, is it possible, or, yeah, is it possible that she fired the weapon? And he said, she either didn't fire the weapon, or the gun didn't have blowback. Meaning it didn't blow any gunpowder back when the, it was fired. Now, that was kind of like one of the first questions, and then there was a question later on at the end of his interview. It was kind of, or on his, in his testimony was, uh, do all guns have blowback? And he said yes. So, his first statement of, did she fire the weapon? No, or the gun didn't have blowback. And then it's, all guns have blowback. So, he more or less said, no, there's no way she could do it. But because the way they spread their questions out, it, it was, it, it makes people not hear one and two. Um, now, another thing was, is there was a lady that was working at that gas station that he went to. She was supposed to testify. But things happened and she more or less wasn't allowed to testify. They, someone pulled something, yada, 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 and said no. She's not at testifying. So, nobody wanted to know that he was there because somebody left with him. And that was just held out of the trial. So, nobody wanted to know that that person was there. Um, another thing that really bugs me is my stepdad was actually trying to adopt me. And uh, he, I think, had talked to my dad and then you know, talk to him about it, and I think he more or less said, hey, I want to adopt him. I want him to, you know, be mine, because my mom had my last name, and like, they both kind of wanted me to have his last name. Now, with a police officer and a semi-religious family, yeah. but um, you, you, you can't lose your son, or, you know, this, I don't know, you, I mean, you do the math on that one. Um, you know, that's part of a lot of the pain that I've had over the years is me watching and doing this math, but, um, one of the stories that I heard from my father was he tried to badmouth, uh, my mom and my stepdad saying that my stepdad came to him saying, oh yeah, she's on drugs and da 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 da. Uh, I think she needs help, and it wasn't one of those things that, that was never happened. I think that was him just trying to destroy my, my image of my mother, and him trying to destroy the image of my stepdad. And that, that adds to a lot of the pain that I've had to deal with. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's played with my head for a lot. And then, you know, the, all that just kind of adds up in my head. Um, and then the next part of it is that detective that, uh, fingerprinted me. Um, when my mom went to see the body in the funeral home, it was told that my grandparents could be there with her when she viewed the body. They said, you have to wait until she's en route, and then we'll tell you, and you can meet her there. It was like an hour went by, and then they finally came and said, Hey, y'all can go meet her now. So they drove there, and they pull in, and the funeral home director, and they're like, Hey, where is, you know, my daughter? And they're like, She's already came and left. She left probably like 30 minutes ago. Uh, come to find out, she had already gone, went and seen it, and was back and upstairs, already back in, when they sent her, or sent them. Now, that being said... The funeral home was a good 20 feet deep, and um, one of the deputies was standing with the funeral home director at the back of the room. The other one was standing beside my mother. Um, they both said that she leaned over and whispered, Honey, why did you make me do it? My mom never called my stepdad honey. She called him baby. So that being said, um, how does somebody 20 feet away hear somebody whispering? And the funeral home director didn't hear this. 
So if he didn't hear this, but two deputies did, one standing beside of him, think about that one. Um, and one other thing that happened was uh, one deputy had spoke off record and said it more or less didn't happen, but they can't say it because it will ruin their, you know, it was pretty much, they can't say nothing. Uh, my grandparents ended up talking to the uh, ADA of the case, and they said that they didn't think that my mom did it, but it was their job to uh, give a guilty plea. And this was in the uh, early 90s, I think 92, 3, 4, something like that. Uh, let see, it happened when I was, the trial was when I was 6, so yeah, 92. Um, so that being said, she was more or less just a escape go per se. They wanted a guilty plea and they didn't care. A lot of the evidence that per se made her guilty was they found a empty bag of crushed up beer cans under my mom's bed, which she had told them they were there because she she wasn't a heavy drinker, she just had a beer after work or so. And she was the type of person that when she had a bag full of cans, she would take them and donate, donate them to you know, like the Red Cross that has the cans or whatnot. And um, my mom uh, and my stepdad actually did cocaine, you know, kind of like on the weekends or something. I don't know, like I guess I'd be at my aunt's or whatnot and they would, you know, kind of have like a, a date night or something. I don't know. Like I said, it's not like I, you know, I can ask a lot of people that because the, a lot of the people that it happened with uh, are all deceased now. Um, but I've done cocaine in my life. Um, I've never forgotten things like that. You don't just, you know, I've never had issues where I just did a line and wanted to shoot somebody. But, um, when you have, uh, 12 people on listening that's never done anything like that, and all they hear is drugs and, uh, you know, whatnot, it's, it's really easy to, um, and then the next part is, from the day the trial started to the guilty plea, uh, was a matter of, like, days. Most murder cases last weeks, months. We're talking days. Because I think the whole trial itself was, like, a day, maybe two days. Uh, and the verdict was maybe a day or so. So, like I said, it all happened in, like, one week. Um, and the trial happened in the early spring, right when it was starting to get warm. The air condition just so happened to not work. Uh, and the judge, more or less, wanted everything sped up because he had Final Four tickets. And he had a game to go to, so they needed to hurry up. So... The AC just magically stopped working for that room. So, you have people that are hot and bothered and they really don't have any true evidence. Nobody really wasn't sure whether she was guilty or not. They just, they didn't know. So, she ended up being sent to prison. Um, and in order for you to appeal things, you have to have new evidence in the case. So if there's no evidence in the first case, how do you add new evidence to it? Um, and it's not like you can reuse uh, all there's the, the, you know, the gunpowder thing because it was used in the first one. You can't add all these new things because it was already used. They didn't have no evidence. They just, they just kind of, you know, they made up their own evidence. They made up a fake confession and that's how that's how they ran with it. So at the end of the day, my mom was well rooted. Um, another part of the story is um, she had hit, I think it was uh, a neighbor's cat or dog or something. She picked it up off the road. She took it to the vet. She paid for the vet bill. She then went to that person's house, told them that she accidentally hit their pet. And she said all the bills are paid. This is where you can find them. You know, I'm really sorry. 
you know, you don't have someone that's that nice and then, you know, within 20 years, just, you know, I feel like if something would have happened, she really would have told me because that's not something you can just sit with for 20 years and not tell one person. And nobody has ever told me that she said anything because she was always, to me, she was always innocent. There was no, there was no evidence to prove that she was guilty. So, in my head, those two people that benefited from it, you know, so at the end of the day, one of those two people had something to do with it, or they both had something to do with it, one did, you know, so, you tell me, you know, but that's my story on, you know, my mom, and, uh, you know, it just happens. You know, I just don't see how so much pain, and I've seen so many, you know, like the detective that I put your mom into prison, meaning he made sure she went there, uh, to the whole brainwashing and all that. Come on now, you do the math. There was a lot of things at stake, and certain people benefited from it. All I know is, I know where my mom's at, and I know where they're going, where the one went, and I'm fine with that, because you can't be so evil all these years, and still expect to go somewhere. So have a great day. Just know... The more I heal, the more I remember. I'll remember. I remember things that happened when I was three. I remember going to Tweetsie Road with my mom. And I can tell you everything that happened on that train. From the Cowboys to Indians. I remember things I will remember. Have a great day. I love everybody. So, same bad time, same bad channel. See you next week. I love y'all. And if you haven't uh, done it, hit the like button. And uh, I really need some subscribers. And uh, you know, maybe somebody can help me with piecing the rest of it together. Maybe help, help me come up with more evidence. I'd love to clear my mom's name. You know, that's something that's uh, on my bucket list. Uh, I'm not really in that field, so I don't really know where to go from it. You know, I love my mom. I want to clear her name. But uh, if it never happens, it never happens. If it does happen, you know. But, uh, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed my story. And I got more to come. Have a great day.